Genesis getting us started today, Invisible Touch. This is Talking Heads on Manx Radio. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy your stay with us. And remember, in part two, if we're not talking about something that you'd like to pass comment on, then introduce it yourself in part two of the programme from about quarter past one onwards, quarter past half past one. But our first topic today, this Sunday, the 18th of November, is the World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Victims. The day has apparently become an important tool in global efforts to reduce road casualties. It offers an opportunity for drawing attention to the scale of emotional and economic devastation caused by road crashes and for giving recognition to the suffering of road crash victims and the work of support and rescue services. Will it be observed in the Isle of Man? Our former head of road policing, now president of the Isle of Man branch of the Institute of Advanced Motorists, joins me in the studio. Derek Flint, welcome back to the programme. Not seen you for a while. It's good to catch up. Yes, indeed. So uh, tell me about this, because this is something that I presume that the Institute is very keen to support. Well, we were discussing it at a committee meeting just last week, really, and, and it was one of those things that really sort of made you stop and think really profoundly about what we do as a charity to, to help road safety and what everybody else is trying to do as well. I mean, we're on the cusp of some really exciting stuff for the Ireland National Road Safety Strategy in the wings um, going through the political process at the moment. But when you get down to the the stats, which unfortunately is one of those things that people talk about rather than the hearts and minds stuff, 1.2 million, 1.25 million people a year, 3,000 people a day being killed on the roads, somewhere in the region of 20 to 50 million injured. These are war figures. Yeah. And it's still happening. And it's the, it's, it's all very well when, you know, we talk about remembering the dead from 100 years ago, and we should do, and we passionately do. But every single day, there are people that have to remember what happened to them, what happened to their families, what happened to their friends, emergency services workers, it still has a profound effect on me to this day, every family that I've had to deal with. And it, it just struck us that on the 18th of November, there's let's, let's just take a minute and just think about the impact that our roads have on our people and our lives. But isn't it always going to be the case? I mean, certainly you can look at, at, uh, at the reduction in casualties and, and fatalities on the roads. Isn't it always the case that you've got these little metal boxes flying around the roads and trucks and all the rest of it, um, and the, their interface with human beings, there is always going to be a, a, an accident level, surely? Statistically, yes. But what you've got to look at is, is the consequences of those collisions. The, the, the UNESCO Global plan the the decade of action for road safety 2011 to 2020 good to see we're catching up now in 2018 that we're about to have a national strategy ourselves appreciates the fallibility of the human condition humans are always going to cock it up yeah there's nothing you can do about that unless we all go in driverless boxes and we're all wizarding around thanks to tesla or google or whoever. well and, and that's on the horizon but even that isn't infallible is it it, it isn't of course it isn't and and it, you appreciate the fallibility of the human condition but then you try and minimize the risk as much as you possibly can by yeah. what they call safe system and that looks at the the education of drivers the training of drivers the road system the risk assessments we were put in place um the, the the whole infrastructure, the vehicle technology, even down to the medical side of things and that golden hour when you get somebody back into theatre and so on, you try and reduce the impact, if you will, of the collision in terms of the fact that you want people to cock it up every now and then because yeah. that's going to happen, but they walk away from it. Yeah, of course. With, well, without, without death or life-changing injury. Yeah, you and I have talked about road safety a number of times over the years, of course, especially in your role at, uh, as head of roads policing. Mm. But to me, less so for you, obviously, as you've just said, but for me it's always been a fairly abstract thing talking about road safety. Um, I've had a couple of accidents, famously fell off a motorbike stupidly, but you know, managed to, to walk away from it in uh, most cases. Not everybody does, and we're also joining the studio by Sandra Dimelo, who lost a daughter in a car crash. Um, nobody could express the, the the damage that that's probably caused to you. And I think that when we look at these things and statistics, we forget about the human element of this. Um, it, I mean, is, is that your take on it? It is my take on it. Um, you, it. It is easy to get lost in the statistics and what we need to do and what we need to do going forward. I put you up on one thing. Yeah. They're not accidents. Well, I mean, I know that they're called road traffic collisions officially these they days, are. aren't they? But the fact of the matter is that nobody goes out with the intention of having no, a, a crash. No, they don't, but quite often human error is always 
nearly always a factor. Mm, that's 95 percent hum- of collisions are down a pilot error. Yeah, sure, and, and, and that, that, that's that, not that's, an accident. That's that, the because of a decision thing. someone has made, be it to not drive to the conditions, to drive too fast, to go on a mobile phone, to have two pints before they've driven. Anything that's kind of created by a human error is usually not an accident. Yeah, but, I mean, if I walk out of here on a, a, a rainy sort of a frosty day mm-hmm. and, and I slip and end up on my bottom, then that's an accident. You know, the fact is you can say as many times as you like that I should have realised that there was ice on the ground or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, it's still an accident, surely, isn't it? I mean, we're talking semantics, We are course, talking semantics, We are talking yes. semantics. We can, talking... We can, which you can do all day. Yeah, and, but this was, this was very much the sort of point in terms of the, the changes that went on in my career when we started looking at road death investigation as a as, as more of a science and brought out the road death investigation manual by by as was then ACPO and looking at these things in terms of hang on we, we don't accept that these things are just an accident there is a human cost with right. each and every one of them and it was it's the emotion around the language you know if me having mm. somebody knock on the door at two o'clock in the morning and say I'm sorry Jimmy's not coming home it was an accident oh thanks very much indeed we'll pick his body up in the morning yeah. as opposed mm-hmm. to there's been a collision we'll find out what happened mm-hmm. if people need to be held to account we will hold them to account whether in a coroner's court or whether or, or a, um, a, a, a a criminal, criminal court, court. Yeah. we will do that and it's going back to that f- that fact that every single one of them leaves a trace of course because yeah. it there is there is the victim per se whether they are left profoundly disabled or whether they're dead it's the family and everybody else that goes around there were that. just as much victims of them. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to, you know, just remember on Sunday, that the fact that this is this is going every single day. Three thousand people globally will lose their lives on the road yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. I think it's important as well to not look at this. Yeah, the whole the phrase itself, day of remembrance, is very emotive. Yeah. And it's very kind of oh, yeah, we're all very sad and it, I think if we look at it as, as an opportunity to just bring awareness to make people stop and think, to give them that fact, oh, hang on, it actually is quite real, and maybe I shouldn't to do that. And, and if you look at it from that point of view and just use it as a tool to just make people stop and think and a little bit of education, yeah. then it's worth, as opposed to we all feel really sorry for ourselves. Well, yeah, I mean, I was going to, and, and you're the perf- perfect person to answer this, it, isn't it a bit mawkish having a, a national day of remembrance for road traffic victims? <laughs> Yes, you know, a little, it, 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 to be I, honest, yes, a little. You know, bit. it's a bit like the the, the bunch of flowers tied to a lamp post. Yeah, just, which I hate. Yeah, yeah I, I hate. I, I do. I I hate it, and I, I get why people do it, and it's important to them. And yeah, and you know, we have to acknowledge that why that's being done, and you can we understand and we can appreciate it. And yes, I do agree to a certain level of what you say. It makes you kind of go, that's a little, that's a little bit uncomfortable. But if you can use it as an opportunity to raise some awareness and make people stop and think, then if you look at it from that point of view, I think well, it's worth I talk to an awful lot of people in the course of doing this job who, who are trying to raise awareness for things. And I sometimes question that. It's all very well raising awareness. Yeah. Nobody goes out on the roads to either be a victim of road traffic crash or to cause one. You know, So you, you can be as aware as you like of the dangers of cars, but you've got competing messages because you've got car manufacturers now saying that the cars are virtually bomb-proof, that mm-hmm. they've got all sorts yeah. of autonomous systems into them. They've got automatic braking, automatic stability control, airbag absolutely everywhere so you, you're getting the message from the car manufacturers that basically you can crash this into a, a, a ball of steel and and you'll walk away from it but then the reality is 3,000 people a, a day aren't doing so you know what good is raising awareness per se I think it's got to be done because people forget about it too quickly drip, drip. We, 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 we brush up we leave some paint on the road mm-hmm. yeah. put a bunch of flowers out dear dear very very sad mm-hmm. yeah it's the the impact, the ripple effect, the the way that that goes, way beyond the death or serious injury of that person, unless you're actually in there as part of that that bubble, mm-hmm. whether it's Sandra as a, as a mum, me as a road traffic investigator, or, or anybody else that's involved, you just don't feel it. Yeah. And it's like the same way that that you know how many of us have actually been to war. We don't feel it, but yeah. when you look at that colorization that was done of the World War One, fantastic, film, mm. profound yeah. imagery, which actually brings it home just exactly how crap that was. And it's the same sort of thing that you know Sandra still does the the, the drive safe thing with the former colleagues in the police and the fire service, and the ambulance service, and that's great because we're taking the message to a generation which has never had. Yeah. That war, war, war that 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 gorish, yeah. mawkish, horrible, yeah. smelly 
event in their lives. Mm -hmm. And if we don't actually remind them that the PlayStation is actually just a video game, of course, and real life when you actually stack your car is a pretty horrible place to be, then we just lose the effect. Because we've got something happening now as well, Stu, with this road safety strategy. The cops, the ambulance service, the doctors, the nurses, everybody else can't do it on their own. Yeah. They need a degree of public support for this and to understand that this is important. So when this strategy comes out, and we're all excited to read about it, that they have got every tool at their disposal and the public understand why they're doing it. Because you know, we still have around 950 collisions a year on the roads of this little island. Yeah. We've had a good couple of years. Things are a little bit less in terms of fatalities, but it's still rubbish for those people that died. They didn't need to die. I mean, most of the times that we've met on the programme over the years has been because, you know, the cops and the road safety people have launched a TT road safety campaign or whatever. And I've looked at those every year, and they're usually a knockoff of what Lancashire have done or whatever, mm. with Isle of Man pasted in instead of Lancashire. Um, the ones that have really made an impact on me, I think, are the ones that do personalise it, that mm. do make road safety, mm. you know, a, a human condition. Yeah. Because either the, the crunched up car or motorbike, mm. you know, at, at the test centre, mm. you know, that that's, uh, or, or talking to people like Sandra, you know, th that makes it a human thing, doesn't it? That that brings it home. It's all about hearts and minds. And, yeah. and you know, I, I, I know that in, in years gone by, um, we've been hugely disappointed because of the political elements around it. We're inviting all these people to come and use our roads, but hey, let's not just let's just tiptoe around the death issue and the fact that if you come off at 150 on the mountain yeah. mile, it's not going to be pleasant. Yeah. And th that sort of lack of acceptance of the fact that there are consequences to these things and our you know, our position as a country with, with our obligations under Article 2 of the Human Rights Act to keep people alive and safe, they seem to just be put to one side with road traffic collisions. Drugs is a different matter. We do everything we can. We have public health strategies, ministers, uh, chief ministers, drug and alcohol strategies and all that sort of stuff. This is very real. This will affect more people on the roads of the Isle of Man and the Isle of Man population than any other issue in the next 12 months. But the thing about the Isle of Man is that we're, we're in an almost unique position of not having a national speed limit, and I know that that's something that you probably feel strongly about, but then you would, given your background, I suppose, me less so. Um, and we've got this very difficult position that the politicians and others have got to tread. One is, come to the Isle of Man, it's a fantastic place, we've got no speed limits, mm. and we've got these great roads. Yeah. And the other is, like you say, you know, that there is a, 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 an but, effect but it's that. not. But it's not difficult, Stuart, that's the thing. The government has a positive obligation to protect life. Speed limits are a risk assessment as part of that. If you then absolve yourself of that responsibility as a government, as a department, mm. and let things happen by their own volition, then your strategy is going to fail. Now, I like a fast run as much as the next man. I've got a lovely fast car parked outside there. I used to do it for a living. Yeah, yeah. I like it as much as the next person, but there is a time and a place for things to change. Mm. And, you know, I've got a lot of friends out there with supercars and, and um, they, you know, look at me with a slight suspicion when I, I mention these things. But having lived through several road traffic collisions a year, several families, Sandra and I met because... Yeah. A, you, a, you a, a daughter door. dying, yeah. you know, and and how can that be right that you you know you make lifelong friends through tragedy like that? It's yeah. just it's just a nonsense. So we're on the cusp of something, and I think with with this Remembrance Day coming about, the opportunity for us to change as a nation. We have a UNESCO biosphere. Well, UNESCO support the safe system for road traffic management. Why aren't we accepting that in its uh, its holistic state as we are with uh, the biosphere thing? One actually doesn't save lives, the other does. I'd, I'd, I'd just leave it to politicians to make the decisions. But I suppose the other thing is now, Stuart, that I've got a voice now. I'm, I'm not beholden to yeah. the, 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 the rules the and you know, the party yeah. line. So I'm more prepared to say what I think I hope I uh, expressed over the years of my career as a, as a, as a senior police officer and, and a road traffic specialist, that I can actually say it for what it is now. It's got to stop. Things have got to change. We've got to stop having these Remembrance Days because it's not happening. You know, it's 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 world celebration of how many lives we've saved rather than the victims that have gone before.